We have quite a lot already made here. We can move around, we can shoot, but we don't have our walking animation yet. And that is because that's going to be a little bit more complex. Because that walking animation is going to always be a forward walking animation. But when we're shooting, the walking animation is going to be influenced by the direction that we're shooting in and that we're walking in. And all that stuff together uh, makes for a little bit more complex calculations. Which we're going to do in C++. But we want to do all of those calculations in C++ and simply when we're using those in Blueprint, we're going to use them in an animation Blueprint. We want those just accessible through one simple node so that we don't have to redo all those calculations every single time when we want to use them in our animation Blueprints. So I have made an animation Blueprint here real quick where I just uh, get the base player character, get its controller, make variables from that, get a velocity uh, variable, which I don't think I actually need. And I also set up a simple blend space, which I will show you right here, uh, which will blend between walking forward, walking backwards, strafing left and strafing right, or the other way around. And that just has a forward speed input and a side speed input that we can use. So if we go into our animation graph, we'll see I also set that up here. We have that blend space with two variables going into it. We're going to need to set these two variables. Now, in the event graph, what we uh, want is we want to make a, a new custom event real quick, and that will just be our uh, set walk animation, something along those lines. And at the very end here, that's what we're going to call. And this entirely depends on whether or not we're shooting, what we're going to be doing with this. So we want to uh, set this is shooting variable that I've already pre-made as well uh, to be the is shooting from our base player character. So let's see, is shooting, that's not available to us because I haven't made it a U property yet. And that's where we're going to get into some interesting stuff in a moment. So let's go to our uh, base magic character and look into or rather into the player controller because that is where we have the is shooting a variable. Maybe that should be on the character itself. Uh, we'll see whether or not we want to end up changing that or not. Uh, but we're going to make this a U property which will be blueprint read only. We only ever want to read this. Let's compile that. And that makes a lot of sense as well why we couldn't get it out of the uh, character because we need to uh, get is shooting out of the controller. So now that we have that variable in our, I'll zoom in a little bit actually, in here, we're going to use that is shooting for a simple branch. If we are shooting, we're going to do some math, which again, we're going to do in C++ in a moment. If we are not shooting, what we want to do is we want to uh, set our side to side movement to zero. And our forward movement is going to be our velocity. And we're going to get the length out of that. And for now, you will see that that means that as long as we are just walking around, we are always walking forward and that works perfectly fine. The moment we start shooting, um, things break apart a little bit because we haven't programmed in what we're going to do there yet. So, of course, what we want to do is we're going to want to set the uh, blend for the side and for the forward in that case too. But how are we going to get that information? We're going to get that through a blueprint pure node. And if you're thinking about blueprint pure node, what does that mean? Uh, if you are used to using things like get game mode, this is a blueprint pure node. It's a blueprint node that doesn't have an execution pin and is just a function that returns a value. Simple as that. You can make those yourself in C++ as well. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code here and make a function for that. So we want to make a function that returns two floats. And you can't really do that. Well, you can do that in a few ways. Uh, you can pass in a pointer to a float variable and change that in the function. Uh, but that's not really what we want to do with a Blueprint Pure Note, because that then requires execution stuff. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, make something that returns an F vector, and we'll call that Calculate Movement Blending. 
and that's going to be a u function and the type will be blueprint pure and let's make an implementation for that real quick and compile just so that i can show you uh how it works in engine so now that we have that we can use our uh, controller variable that we've made remember uh we made that right here after casting to it and now we can simply get the calculate movement blending which will simply return a vector here that we can uh, split and we're going to when we make the function in a moment we're just going to set the x to being the side to sides here and the y to being the forward blending and that way we can get these two values out of one blueprint pure node so let's just plug those in already uh so that's all set up now let's go back into c and start coding this thing Importantly, uh, in a previous video, we made a F rotator for the shooting rotation and an F rotator for the movement rotation, which gets set whenever we input anything to do with shooting or movement. So we're going to be using both of those rotators here today. And we're going to be making a F vector for the movement, which will be equal to our movement rotation dot vector that way it just gets converted into a normalized vector i believe it's normalized anyway and then we'll do the same thing with our shooting rotation as well this way we can actually do vector math with it the rotators themselves are a little bit weird what we want to end up doing is we want to get a uh, float here and that float is going to be our uh, dot product of those two vectors if you don't know what a dot product is uh the dot product of two vectors is a float that just more or less tells you how much of a difference there is between the two vector directions and we can get that from the f vector static function called dot product which takes in our two vectors here so that will be our movement vector and our shooting vector and now we have a float that has that dot product in it and actually, that dot product is going to be our forward blending uh, component here. So that's, I believe, the X component in the vector that we're going to eventually return. But we also need the side to side, and that leads a little bit more math to it. Just a little bit, not too much. What we want to do with that is we want to get our original uh, shooting vector here. And we want to multiply that by our dot product. And then we want to get our movement vector here and put that in front and subtract the shooting multiplied by the dot product from that and just for good measure let's make that into a uh, variable here of its own so that will be our uh, blend vector it's not a very good name for it but we're <laughs> gonna stick with it for now because the length of this vector will be our side to side movement so now we have everything we need so let's just simply make a vector again here and let's call that output vector and that will be equal to a f vector where the x component will be our dot product the y component will be the length of our blend vector so that blend vector dot length and the z component will just be zero and then that is the vector that we will be returning. And it seems like I mixed up the side to side and the forward blending. So I'm just going to switch those back around because it's easier than going back into C++ and changing things there. So in theory now, uh, we can walk around and we can shoot, but we still are stuck in the idle animation. And that actually does make sense, believe it or not, because what we are returning here is a vector of a value that is somewhere in the range of like one one zero that's not very very much so what we actually uh, want to do here is we want to return our output vector uh, multiplied by something like 100 that way all of the components get increased to a size where we can actually reasonably work with them you could also change the blend space around to blend between values of one and one rather than a hundred and a hundred which i did uh, I prefer doing it this way, so, but it's very much up to yourself. And now you can see we are moving in the direction that we are putting in, and the animation actually matches 
depending on what direction we are shooting in. No matter what direction we're shooting in and what direction we're moving in, our animations match up to those directions, which is very, very nice. Now, there's quite a bit of math here uh, with doing the dot product and then multiplying and subtracting and adding and all that kind of stuff, which that might intimidate people a little bit. But really what's happening here isn't all that complicated. And if you just go through it a couple of times, you'll probably start to understand uh, what this is all about. The main thing that I wanted to show off here today isn't all of this math, because math is boring, right? The main thing I wanted to show instead is the blueprint pure U functions, in which we can have one of these nodes that doesn't need to have an execution input and instead just calculate something to return a value for you to use. So if you just have a single variable that you want out of a C++ class, you can just make it a U property and blueprint read only or blueprint read write. Uh, but if you want to have something that needs to be calculated in a function in C++ and you just want a simple output, just something like what we did here uh, today with calculating this, you can make it a blueprint pure node and that way it just returns your eventual output value uh, without you having to set up a whole bunch of calculations in blueprint because that's the whole reason we're using C++ so we don't need to do this basic stuff in blueprint. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 